Hello, and welcome to Nerd Sanctum. Today I've got a cool topic planned for you guys. I'm going to be explaining everything about how CDs work. Now this includes video games, DVDs, music CDs, and data discs, and also the various devices that we use to read and write data on the discs. Okay, so now let's just jump into the anatomy of how a disc actually is created, right? So basically discs are usually 1.2 millimeters thick. Most of that is a polycarbonate plastic, which is, you know, a clear substance. And then we have, let's say, a thin layer of aluminum, right, that's, that's reflective. Now on top of that, we usually put some acrylic solution just to protect the aluminum, and then we have, you know, whatever label that you put on top. Okay, now let's talk about the general structure of how we store data onto these discs, right? Imagine if you had a single line or track that starts at the center of the disc and spirals outwards towards the outer portion of the disc. So we have one spiral that contains all the data on a particular disc. So it basically stores this as a series of flat spots or bumps. And a cool thing is actually, if we straightened out this spiral into a straight line, it would actually be about three and a half miles long, which I find pretty crazy. Um, but anyways, let's look at now how we're using devices to read data from these discs. Most disc reading devices are made out of three main components. You have the drive motor, which actually spins the disc. Then you have a laser and lens pair, which basically shoot a laser onto the disc and figure out whether there's a reflection coming back. And then you have the tracking mechanism, which basically moves the laser and the lens from the inside of the disc to the outside of the disc at the right time so it can follow that one single file line of data. Okay, so now let's look at how we're actually going to turn those physical bumps on a disc into digital signals that we actually use on our computers. When a disc reading device shoots a laser onto a disc, right, if it hits a flat reflective surface, it simply bounces that laser beam back towards that sensor and then that sensor picks up that light and says, okay, binary one, we're getting some signal here, right? Now, if instead it actually hits a bump, what happens is since that bump's not reflective, it's gonna be you know, going back at a different angle and that sensor is not gonna be able to pick up that signal, so it's gonna say binary zero, right? Now you can easily see from this series of flat surfaces and bumps, we're gonna get a series of ones and zeros digitally on our computer. So this binary series of ones and zeros is gonna give us a digital signal. Then we take this digital signal and put it in a digital analog converter, which basically figures out how frequent or how close together these bumps are, right? And then from that closest, we can figure out, you know, what total voltage we should put out, which gives us our analog signal in which we can put in an amplifier to increase the intensity of the voltages and then output to some sort of speaker. How do we deal with things like scratches or dirt marks or dust or whatever, right? Imagine, you know, we can't read every single bump. 100% accurately. Now basically how this works is we have two different methods. We have encryption and non-sequential data ordering, which basically means um, if we're storing data in a single file, right, we can actually put it different parts of the disk and then so imagine if we have one scratch, it's going to be fine because we get, we're actually getting that data from a different part of the disk and another part is let's say if we poke a little hole in our disks, those bumps aren't even there, right? Um, some disks have encryption towards the center, so basically what happens is, you know, from the external data or data around that missing uh, portion, it can actually decrypt some algorithm and figure out, okay, well that's what that portion was supposed to be, and, you know, mostly fix it if it's not too much of a data loss. Okay, so now that we've explained everything about how to read data from a disk, let's start to discuss how we actually write data to a disk, right? Because I don't see a magical way we could create bumps on this disk. That doesn't really make sense. What chemical engineers did to solve this problem was actually really creative. What they did is they invented a clear dye that when heated up to a certain temperature became opaque or not clear. So what happens is we actually have these devices with these lasers that when they shoot this clear dye, basically what happens is they heat up that clear dye so it becomes not clear. So it's pretty much the same exact thing, but instead of reflective flat spots or non-reflective bumps, we're looking at you know, reflective dye or non-reflective dye. Now, uh, let's move on to how rewritable disks work, right? How does a disk become rewritable? Now, to solve this new problem, what chemical engineers did was they created a dye that changed when it was cooling, right? So imagine if you heated up this dye to a specific temperature, right? What happens is when it would cool, it would become clear. 
Now, if, let's say if you took the same dye and you heated it up to a different temperature, what would happen is it would cool down and become opaque. So what you could do is take one laser and shoot it along this spiral pattern along this disc with two different intensities. One making it reflective and the second making it non-reflective just like the bumps. So that about wraps up every modern technique we have to read and write data to discs. Hopefully after watching this you feel like you've learned something. If so, I'd really appreciate if you left a thumbs up. And also, if there's other stuff you'd like to learn about, please leave a comment below. I'd love to make a video about it. Um, but anyways, as always, thanks for watching and until next time, have a good day.